So this is a special edition tutorial for the for loop chapter. In this tutorial, we are going to explore some techniques of creating different kinds of illusions. And specifically, we are going to explore something called the anaglyph. Um, so here I have an image created by Dan Wilson. Thank you, Dan Wilson. Um, that essentially demonstrates the principle of anaglyph. Um, so the way it works is that you would have, um, you know, a secret message that is in the color of cyan, for instance, um, that goes behind a red word or red pattern. Um, in this case, it's just it's a it's a crisscross pattern that overlays that um, very, very thin and very light um, cyan words. And the, the, the trick and the kind of interesting illusion that happens when you put a put on a red glasses or put on a red filter over this image is that you can actually reveal the cyan words that is um, hidden behind the red pattern. So we can actually reproduce this effect in P5JS. Here I have a very simple example and we're going to try to reproduce this first. And this essentially um, has a magenta front and a cyan back. So, so essentially, as long as you are picking two chroma chromatically opposite um, colors, then this effect is likely going to work. So it can be red and cyan, that's the most common combination. It can also be, be like bright blue and light yellow, for instance. So I'll show both of these examples. So, so what um, is happening here is that the, the word that's behind nothing special is really hard to read. But upon <laughs> Um, me like clicking and dragging on top of the canvas, I can actually reveal a secret message that is hidden under plain sight. Um, so, so the theme of exploring this technique called stenography, where we are able to hide things under plain sight and bypass information is part of um, the purpose of this special series. Okay, so <clears throat> So here, um, let's start a new sketch. And I'm going to show you step by step how, how you achieve such an effect. Um, OK, so we are going to start by writing some text. And I'm going to say, um, nothing special to see here. Um, and um, the position is going to be, I'm just going to put this in the center, uh, width divided by 2, height divided by 2, and I'm going to hit play. My words are very tiny, so I'm going to change that. Um, I can put in my draw, but I'm going to put in my setup. So text size is going to be 50, and I'm also going to center my text, so text a line is going to be center and I think okay I I want also my text to be italic so I'll say text style italic and I'm gonna hit play there you go um, nothing is special <laughs> so so I'm gonna go back down here to my text and give it the crucial color, right? So, so the in the previous example, I showed magenta. So I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna use red, okay? So I'm going to say fail is going to be two five five zero zero, and this is going to be the text that stands in front of the secret message. And okay, now I have to make the secret message, I suppose. Um, so here it's going to be another piece of text that goes behind, drawn before, nothing special. And I'm going to say this is a secret message with divided by two, height divided by two. And the feel of this is going to be zero, two, five, five, two, five, five, which is the cyan color. So, ooh missing something 
Oh, I don't know why I type a column. It should be semicolon. Um, okay, hit play. So you can see now that I have a message behind my red text. And it's not very visible, but I can make it even more invisible by making my background 255 and completely white. And you can obviously play with the opacity of your cyan color if you want to make it even more invisible. That's all kind of um, nudgeable. So, so the, the secret sauce here for creating um, that revealing effect is actually using the blend mode. And when we apply blend mode multiply, it actually creates a very similar effect to when we are in actual life wearing our red glasses and looking at things and the world filtered in red. Okay, so, so let's try that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, um, I don't think I've covered this variable yet. This is a, a P5 system built-in variable. <laughs> Just like mouse X and mouse Y, um, this variable is called mouse is pressed. And in fact, this is a Boolean variable that check whether mouse, if mouse is pressed is true or false. So the benefit of this is when I use this variable inside the context of an if statement inside of my draw, it's going to check whether my mouse is being pressed at every single frame, right? When I use function mouse press, it just executes the block of code when the mouse is being pressed once. Um, and if mouse is pressed, this, this system variable I have actually allow us to be able to constantly check whether the mouse is pressed at any given moment. So this is good for if you, you know, if you're creating, say, a game and you need, you know, you need your character to constantly follow, you know, like the mouse or the longer your, the mouse press, like the, 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 you know, quicker the character do something or jump or whatever. So that's kind of the usages of if mouse is press. And so I am going to say if mouse is pressed, uh, I'm actually first going to create like a kind of a brush stroke effect. So I'm going to say ellipse, mouse x, mouse y, 100, 100. And I'm going to give my mouse a red color. So this is going to serve as our fake um, filter or red glasses, so to speak. So, so now I have this. When I click, <laughs> when I click on my um, canvas, I'm going to see this red circle. I'm gonna come back up here to set up and say no stroke to get rid of that stroke over there. Try again, okay, and cool. So if mouse is pressed, add that red filter. However, this doesn't reveal anything because we need blend mode multiply to help us. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write blend mode multiply and I'm going to hit play and <laughs> it's pretty dramatic. So yeah, see what happens is when you click on it, it is going to reveal that message. It's just like, yeah, it's kind of a surprise. Um, so, so now what I got is once I hit play, uh, once I hit a mouse press, the blend mode turns into multiply and then kind of like scratch off the message in the back, which is kind of cool. Um, but I can also obviously make it so that when mouse isn't pressed, I am going to switch it back to our regular mode. And in P5, it's going to called blend. That means the default mode. So if I do that, it would be it will start from the default mode, right? When I uh, press on my mouse, it's going to change, reveal my secret message, yay! And when I let go, it's going to retrieve back to normal. At least nothing has happened. Um, okay, so. 
Um, I am going to do this again, but with a pattern and also with a different set of opposite colors. So let's see. That's a for loop challenge over there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, okay, we have, we start with the, the message that we're trying to hide and then we have the red text in front of it. I'm going to first, I guess, replace my red text with um, some kind of pattern. I don't know what yet. Um, but what about, what if we just draw a grid? <laughs> um, okay, so let's say for grid, we're going to create these like colored lined grid. So we actually need to change our field to stroke. And we need to go up here and say no feel um, so that it's not going to feel in. <laughs> we can see through it. And um, okay, we're going to do one at a time. So here, stroke is going to be red. Now create a nested for loop and create a grid. So for let i equals to 0, i smaller than width. Um, I plus plus. Then inside for let J equals to zero, J smaller than height, J plus plus. Sweet. And what I'm going to have here is rect um, I times, um, what should it be? Let's just say cell is going to be five and j times five and i or sorry five five whoa okay so that's something over there i guess this feel over here is actually causing that to be blue and we actually don't even want that fail there because we're going to create another pattern behind it. So, so here I'm going to say stroke and I'm going to here instead uh, create like maybe like a secret pattern and it's going to be made out of a for loop and it's going to say let i equals to 0, i smaller than 20, i plus plus. And I'm just going to draw a bunch of ellipse, kind of like a ripple effect. So the ellipse is going to be positioned at width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And it's going to be um, i times 20, something like that. So, ooh, I actually see my pattern there. Cool. So, um, you know, there's you can nudge it and make it more invisible. Um, I can maybe just change the size here, tweak the size here a little bit. And actually, you know what? I want to change a different kind of color combination. So I'm going to make the background pattern more like light yellow. So it's going to be 255-2550. Hit play. So that's a little more invisible. And I'm going to make my overlay to be blue. So something like 00255. So I'm going to hit play here. And now that's way more contrasty. And I'm going to also make my circle just like a little smaller. Maybe more like 10. Okay, so, so there it is. I have a pattern behind a pattern. I can probably nudge the number a little more or like make my pattern, the overlay pattern more complicated to hide it even more. But I'm going to live with this for now, and I'm going to continue the program. So I'm going to do, um, disable this part, and I'm going to say that if mouse is pressed, then we're going to apply our um, 
this kind of like filter brush again. And the filter brush this time is going to be 00255. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to see what happens. So when I, ooh, when I click on it, ooh, you can see that, well, okay, so it basically colored the whole thing, right? Like the feel has overridden the whole thing, which is fine and it reveals our pattern and that's good. Um, but we can probably nudge this a little bit to make it not, make the feel not override our original sort of uh, patterns. So I'm going to add, ooh, I'm going to add a no feel right before my stroke. And I'm going to hit play. And, and now you get that paintbrush effect. Um, I'm, sh I'm recording, so it's lagging a little bit, but this is the idea of a anaglyph and I hope you enjoy this and can create your own little message hiding stenography mechanism.